All right, here's a cool straightforward um, equilibrium example that will help illuminate what the difference is between torque and force. So I have a bar. Uh, it has a mass of 0.6 kilograms, a length of one meter, um, and it's set on a pivot, which is right shown over here. That's a distance of 0.3 meters from the end. And there's a mass of unknown mass that hangs from the leftmost end of the block. Now we want to figure out a bunch of things. We want to figure out, uh, based on those values, uh, what's the mass of the block that's keeping this system balanced? And also uh, we could figure out the force that the pivot is exerting as it supports the rod. Now you might say, well, how can this even be balanced? There's no mass on the other side. Remember, first and foremost, that a bar has mass and its mass acts at its center of mass. And so this is the time where we're really dealing with the real physicality of objects. So we don't ignore them unless it explicitly says to ignore them. So we have this 0.6 kilogram bar. Um, let's start by doing what we always do when we're dealing with forces, which is drawing a the force diagram. So here we have its weight. Um, I'm going to write that as 0.6 kilograms times g. We can also note that that's the midpoint of the one meter point of the one meter bar. So this distance from the pivot um, to that point is going to be 0.2 meters because d is given as 0.3 meters, and together they make up half of the bar. And then we have the weight of this mass here. I'm just going to call it mg because we don't know what that is. Um, and you can see that relative to this pivot point, those two forces create opposite torques. The 0.6 kilogram uh, g, the one on the right, creates a clockwise torque, and the unknown mass creates a counterclockwise torque. Now there is one more force acting. I'm going to draw it in uh, a different color. I'll draw it in red. And that's the force of the pivot, the support force. I'll call it a normal force. That's just supporting the rod. And we don't know what that is. But it's there, and it's important that we note it. So the first thing we might want to say is let's just, if we want to figure out what that force is and what the mass is, let's just do sigma Fy equals zero. Let's apply Newton's third law. It's in equilibrium, so it means the up forces must equal the down forces. So that normal force from that support rod should equal mg plus 0.6 kilograms times g. And you see very quickly we can't solve that because we don't know the mass of the hanging mass and we don't know the normal force, so we're stuck. This is where the idea of torque comes in. In order to analyze the torque on a system, the first step you must do is, and I'm going to write those steps, where should I put them? I'll put them down here, is pick a rotation. Well, let's draw the forces like we always do. Then the next step is going to be to pick a rotation axis. Now, what is really smart is picking that rotation axis to be at a place where you don't know some of the forces. Because remember, if a force acts directly at the axis of rotation, like at the hinge of a door, it won't create a torque because it doesn't have any distance. And remember, torque is force times distance from the uh, rotation axis. So I'm going to put our rotation axis, I think I'm going to make it green so it stands out. I'm going to put it right here, this point, which is sort of the natural point to do the pivoting anyway. Right here is going to be my coordinate system of rotation. And so you could see that the normal force provides no torque because it has no r. It has no distance. It's at the axis of rotation. So I've eliminated that from my equation, which is great. Now we can also see that the other two uh, torques, uh, other two forces torque around that pivot point. So let's start with the fact that the sum of all of our torques, sigma tau, equals zero. And what that means is that the clockwise torques must equal the counterclockwise torques. And remember, torque is equal to uh, F perpendicular times R, or R perpendicular times F, or R cross F. In this case, everything's mutually perpendicular, so we just have to multiply. So our torque here is going to be this force, the clockwise torque, 0.6 kilograms times G, times its distance from the rotation axis, which is 0.2 meters. And that's going to equal the counterclockwise torque, which is Mg, times its distance from the rotation axis, which is 0.3 meters. The Gs are going to cancel out. And then we just solve for m. 0 0.6 times 0 0.2 is 0 0.12 divided by 0 0.3 is 0 0.4 kilograms. And that's the value of our unknown mass. Now I could come back up here if I wanted to and solve for the value of my normal force.